Hey, good evening, y'all. This is Carolina Weather Authority meteorologist Joshua Nagelberg. We've got some rough weather moving through the Carolinas right now, but I'm going to talk about what's to come in the tropics because I know it's got a lot of y'all's attention, uh, especially for those of you coming in from Florida. You've definitely got to be on your toes here in October because Florida and October storms certainly is a possibility. So I've got a lot to show you guys. If you could, real quick, subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest videos. I'll try and get them out here a few times a week. Once we get some named storms, I think starting this weekend, then uh, videos will come on a more daily basis. Uh, so let's take a look at the name list right now. You can see that we've uh, run through the gamut here on into the Greek letters with Alpha and Beta. The next two that I'm going to talk about, our next two potential storms, that is, are Gamma and Delta. We've had 23 named storms. That puts us at record pace. The record, by the way, is 2005, which um, we may or may not touch. It looks like we probably could. Uh, but the one thing I will tell you is the storms we've had this year have not rivaled the kind that we had in 2005. Laura was kind of the closest call to that. Uh, but uh, that year had Katrina and Wilma and Rita and just some incredible storms. We have not seen the kind of accumulated energy that we saw during those years. Um, we have videos on Carolina Weather Authority. We're going to have more coming up after this cool snap talking about what potentially could come up the southeast coast. At least something we'll have to watch. If you're vacationing in the Outer Banks, you'll want to come with uh, come to our website a little bit more. Uh, and we're going to have a lot more talking about the tropics here coming up as well. So I uh, over the weekend, I did uh, issue a video, which a lot of y'all watched, and uh, talking about the area we're watching in the Northwest Caribbean. And the Hurricane Center has it at a 50% chance of development in the next five days. Uh, they're saying low pressure is expected to form. I do have a trackable wave I'm going to show you guys, and uh, that will give you <clears throat> something to at least start with, but towards the end of the week, things should start organizing. Here's a look at our visible satellite image. You can see a large storm over the Great Lakes with a huge front dropping all the way down across the eastern U.S. into the southwest Gulf, and uh, behind it, a very nice, cool, refreshing fall-like air mass. Uh, that is going to protect areas in the plains and in, I think Texas and Louisiana for a while, uh, but farther east, this front is likely to hang up. Uh, cold fronts getting through Florida this time of year are few and far between, uh, but certainly this front is going to make some headway and that's going to be what we're watching to see how strong the trough is that pushes this front southeast because that's going to determine where any tropical systems could go. Here's the wave that we think is going to develop over the weekend in the Northwest Caribbean. Uh, you can see it's uh, moving through Haiti and south of Jamaica. There's a bit of an upper level low. Uh, nothing organized right now. In fact, the Northwest Caribbean is beautifully sunny. But as this moves west, it'll be in a spot where it can gradually develop over the weekend. And if it uh, does start to develop and consolidate as we head into the late weekend and early next week, we very well could see some quick intensification depending on how much land it can interact with. If it comes up the Yucatan Channel, that's going to be a prime spot for it to develop. But if it uh, forms farther west towards the Yucatan and Belize, those folks are going to get flooded, but we aren't going to have an intense storm, at least at that point. Farther east in Cuba and Jamaica and the Caymans, of course, need to be on alert. But Florida definitely uh, is the first spot I'm watching for potential impact for the U.S. coming down the road towards next week. Now behind that, we have an upper low that's not going to develop, but we have another wave that's kind of riding low right now. And that's what I am going to watch for potentially a second system that once it moves into the Western Caribbean behind this first system could also develop. And I told you guys over the weekend on Sunday that we could have two systems kind of back to back threatening the U.S. Um, is it going to work out that way? That remains to be seen, but it's definitely still on the table. We're not going to write it off. Each model run is going to show something different. And of course, these two systems, if they develop, could interact with one another, and that could cause forecasts to blow up in our faces. And behind that, we have another wave coming off of Africa, which some models do develop, but that's not something I'm worried about at this point. Believe it or not, there's still a spin here south of the Azores. It is the zombie low of Paulette third week out there we could still track this low but it's not going to develop so uh, some of you guys will probably question me why are you talking about it because it's still there i think that's kind of cool all right so let's uh get uh to it here and here's the gfs uh, parallel model this is going to be the future gfs and it shows this uh front that's moving offshore and then we're watching pressures lowering in the northwest caribbean you can see down here friday morning maybe a thousand millibar low pressure according to this operational run and then we've got a developing tropical storm. And this thing is actually on the latest run heading more to the west-northwest, which uh, is something you would want to see in Florida at this point. Not so much, of course, in the Yucatan, uh, but then brings it up as a hurricane over the northeastern tip of the Yucatan Saturday night. 
Uh, so we could have a hurricane quickly forming in just a, a 48 hour stretch. The water is super warm down there. Um, we've seen storms close to land just really go to town here. And this storm, if it does form the way that this model shows, could be one as well. And the next name on the list is Gamma. Now it does survive the Yucatan on this model run. This is the 12Z run of the GFS parallel and uh, starts to turn slowly northward and then after that things get kind of questionable. A couple runs ago, uh, Sunday, we saw this uh, coming up through the Florida Keys and coming up the Florida Peninsula. Recent runs are now building this high a little bit stronger, uh, which means we have a weaker steering environment. The storm could kind of settle in and kind of tail away to the west. It could, I mean, this model's going to major hurricane in the northeast bay of Campeche. That's on the table. Uh, but certainly not the official forecast, I think, just yet. We've got a ways to go before we can even make that forecast. I'm actually going to show you guys a graphic here, and you saw it on the headline of some potential tracks. There's actually three of them, and they all are, are possible, so it's not going to, I'm not going to weigh one over the other two, uh, but two of the three do threaten the southeast, so that's a key point I would like to make with you, with you all. This is next Monday, Tuesday. Wednesday, Thursday, and at this point fading into Mexico. Now behind it, that next wave that I showed you all heading into the Southeast Caribbean behind this one, um, that could get close to Jamaica and Southeast Cuba by the middle of next week. Uh, if it's far enough away from this first system, it may not interact with it. It has a good shot at maybe coming up the southeast coast or going through Cuba and coming up through Florida. And how much land time it spends over land is going to determine how strong it could get. If it uh, spends more time over and develops farther west of Jamaica, it's got a great shot at developing into a hurricane. If not, it could be a weaker system. Uh, but nonetheless, in Florida, you're going to get a lot of rain no matter where these systems go. And this model takes it kind of weak into the west and then up the east coast. Um, as a, a weak a weak system which could eventually strengthen in New England as it picks up some jet stream energy. So there's a lot to look at. That's just this model run. Uh, the GFS operational does not look like that. It shows a weaker system staying south and dying over the Yucatan and maybe trying to get going over the Bay of Campeche but not really making any headway. The system behind it, by the way, not developing until uh, the following weekend over the southeastern Gulf, but that could be a threat to Florida as you can see here. Uh, with uh, something coming across the Keys towards Miami on the 11th and 12th, so around Columbus Day weekend. Uh, so Florida, nonetheless, I think you're going to get probably at least one of these storms. Now, how strong it'll be is still up for grabs, uh, but there's a potential if this high ends up being weaker or, uh, and I'm going to show you this real quick, our, um, well, I thought I had it up here. Guess not. I was going to show you how strong the trough was. Um, actually, yeah, let's take a look at that. Um, the... I guess I don't have it. Anyway, um, if the trough is a little stronger and picks this system up faster, it's going to come up towards the northeast. Now, here's a look at the uh, rainfall forecast. Ignore this because it's our current system, but take a look at how wet it looks like it gets over the southeastern Gulf and Florida as we head into next week, no matter where this system goes. This is uh, basically the GFS parallel as well as other ensemble members and the operational takes the mean of all the models and averages them together and shows an incredible amount of rain over the Western Caribbean coming up through Florida and even up into the Outer Banks. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a zoom in here so you can see what I'm talking about. Here's the East Coast. I can't get you a state level view from weathermodels.com, but here's the East Coast. And you can see if you're in Florida, be prepared to build the ark. No matter what comes your way, it's going to be wet, whether it's an organized system or not. Tampa Bay, we've got some potential for 10 inches of rain by the end of next week. Uh, and then maybe some more rain coming after that. Same goes for the Space Coast and the Outer Banks, potential for a foot of rain. Somebody over here is going to get two feet probably over the ocean, not a threat to us. Uh, but nonetheless, with this front camping out, we've got kind of a stalling of systems. And maybe if this trough starts to lift north, pulls moisture up out of the Caribbean, it's going to be a super wet first half of the month. All right, so we'll look real quick at the ensemble cyclones, and you can see... Model starting to develop things here in about 78 hours. That's at the end of the week, beginning of the weekend, and then quick intensification possible if and only if this system stays out over the uh, Northwest Caribbean. Otherwise, it's weaker and going into the Yucatan. Here, by the way, is the next system possibly developing right behind it, about two days behind. Um, and that one, uh, some of the models developing into a hurricane and pulling up through Cuba and into Florida. And uh, we've got a lot of spaghetti all over the place, but several tracks uh, recurving into Florida, either the Panhandle or the Peninsula crossing Cuba, uh, lesser of a threat to Texas. Uh, we think Texas, I wouldn't say out of the woods, but much less likely than, of course, um, Mississippi and Alabama and on east. But Florida, I think, is going to be the area we're watching for one 
or potentially two systems. And uh, that's what I'm uh, going to key in on, on here, folks, um, real quick. Here is our stab at the first system. Um, maybe a hurricane. I've just put the icon here. Not, I'm not intentionally saying it will be one, but if it comes up through the Yucatan, it could either stay weak and drift westward, or it could come far enough north of the Yucatan and then still get pushed west on the periphery of this high pressure if it's strong and far enough south. And then it's not a threat to the U.S. unless it stalls and finds a way to get picked up later by another trough or the potential where it could uh, come up into the central and then eastern Gulf and threaten Florida and maybe come up the east coast as well towards October 6th, 7th, and 8th. Um, how strong it'll be, again, we, it's way too soon to say it hasn't even developed yet. Now the system behind it, I'm going to take a stab and say it's, it's a few hundred miles to the east of this system, maybe 500 miles east, and farther east over Cuba. Again, where the high ends up, it's going to spread eastward, will determine if this thing will stay and put... Uh, weak and get pushed to the west, or maybe it's strong over here for that matter by October 9th or 10th, or if it gets picked up by the next trough, a weakness in the ridge, and gets recurved across or to the east even of Florida. So a lot up for grabs here, but if you're in Florida, you can see one or two potential systems through the first three weeks of the month of October with a potential for significant flooding rainfall. Uh, so definitely keep it tuned here. No official forecast yet. These are just possibilities. Um, but we've been talking about the Northwest Caribbean here for about two or three weeks. And uh, this is the area to watch. Uh, we'll keep an eye on what's coming across from Africa, but things are going to be less likely to develop farther out like we've seen most of the season. But as we get storms in closer over the Northwest Caribbean, then we've got more potential problems for the eastern United States. So a lot can change here. This high will eventually uh, lift northeast. Another front's going to come east towards the third week of October. Eventually this gets kicked off. Um, but there's a very tiny, maybe 5% chance we have two systems that stay weak and south and uh, do not affect the United States one bit. But some of that moisture is eventually going to get strewn in this direction. All right, folks, thanks for joining me. And, of course, if you could, subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest videos. Appreciate you all joining me. Uh, enjoy the cooler weather. It should be pretty nice here over the next couple of days with some cool nights and some great fall color expected as we head to October. And we're going to keep our eyes on the tropics for you all here as well. All right, everyone, take care. God bless.